We're going to keep moving on in chapter six. And we're going to go to multiplication and division along with estimations. So when we multiply rational numbers, it's actually slightly easier than when we're working with addition and subtraction. But it's important to remember that multiplication is really just repeated addition. This is why when you're multiplying with rational numbers, you're going to multiply the top numbers together and the bottom numbers together. So this is 3 times 3 over 1 times 4, which is going to give us 9 fourths, that's an improper fraction, that we can convert to a mixed number of 2 and 1 fourth. Multiplication is going to be part of an area still here because we're still dealing with ratios and fractions. So in order to complete multiplication of rational numbers, I multiply straight across. So here's an example. If 5 sixths of the population of a city are college graduates and 7 elevenths are female, what fraction of the population of the city is female college graduates? So it's going to be 7 elevenths of 5 sixths, which we're going to multiply to complete that operation and get 35 over 66. Now in the lab, it's going to be really important that you fully reduce these fractions. The multiplicative identity is different than the addition identity because it's what I would multiply to get the, the object back. So when I'm working with an identity, I would add zero in the additive identity. And the multiplicative, I'm going to multiply by one because that's what's going to give us the exact same thing back. If I want to do that as an inverse, that's going to be what multiplied is going to give me one. And that's going to be the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of a fraction is the flip of it. So if I had 3 over 1, the flip would be 1 over 3. Now the distributive property of multiplication still works with rational numbers. So if there's addition inside of parentheses or subtraction, I'm going to distribute what's in front of the parentheses to each number. Here, if I'm looking at the multiplication property of equality, rational numbers work the same as integers. If I multiply both sides by the exact same fraction, it is still an equivalent statement. In the multiplication property, if I have two ratios being compared and I'm using a positive number, when I multiply in the inequality, both values by that, the sign is not going to change. So this is like if you had 2x equals, um, or x over 2 is less than 5. If I multiply both sides by a positive value, I don't change the inequality sign. But in the second part, if I have e over f, which is less than 0 or negative, I am going to change the sign. And then we know that 0 times any number is going to give us back 0. So here's another example that we're going to utilize with a simple word problem. We're going to let x be the original price and 3 fourths of x be the sale price. So I'm going to compute 3 fourths of x equals 330. Now, to get x alone, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I multiply both sides by the reciprocal, and I find that x is 440. So that gives me what the original price was. Now, if I'm using improper fractions and I'm multiplying mixed numbers together, I'm going to convert the mixed number to the improper fraction from what we learned in the last lecture. I'm going to multiply those improper fractions together straight across, and then I'm going to convert the resulting improper fraction to a mixed number. So in order to do the mixed number multiplication, you have to first find the improper fraction, then complete the multiplication, then change that resulting improper fraction to a mixed number. The distributive property is going to work the same way if I choose to distribute it with objects inside of parentheses. The division of rational numbers is a different concept than multiplication. When I'm using division, it works slightly differently. I don't divide straight across. When I use division, I'm actually going to flip and multiply. So if I start looking at, let me get to an exact question. So when I get here, if I want to divide two rational numbers, I'm going to flip the second one and multiply by it. So 
if I have two fractions with the same denominator, the result is going to be obtained by, not, by dividing the numerator of the first fraction by the numerator of the second because the denominators cancel. If they have different denominators, we're going to rename them so the denominators are equal. What does this actually look like? If I have 1440 minutes in a day found from doing 60 minutes times 24 hours, that gives me 36 over 1440, or 1 40th of the day when I reduce it. Now, how many three quarter minute public service announcements can I make in 36 minutes? So look here, I have 36 divided by 3 fourths. I'm going to change it to multiplication, then I'm going to use the reciprocal and multiply straight across. So in a way, it's almost that division is not defined with fractions because we're converting that division into multiplication. Here's another example. I'm going to have 35 and 1 half divided by 3 eighths. Well, first I need to get to the improper fraction. Once I have the improper fraction, I will flip 3 eighths to get 8 thirds, multiply straight across, then convert that to a mixed number. Now, if I want to know how much material is left over, I'm going to have a fourth of a yard. Here's another example. I have a bookstore. It's got some shelves. I want to know how many books can be placed on the shelf. Well, we need to find out how many one and a quarters there are in that bookshelf length. Now, in order to do this division, I'm going to convert them both to improper fractions. Once I have the division of the improper fractions, I'm going to flip the second fraction, multiply straight across so that I know 30 books can be placed on the shelf. Now, estimation and mental math comes into play here because we can kind of round to the nearest whole number like we did before. If I look at 3 and 1 fourth and 7 and 8 ninths, I could kind of estimate that as 3 and 8. If I look at 3 and 8, that's 24. And if I try to figure out what it would be between, I know that it would be somewhere between 3 and the first number and 7, which would be 21, or 4 and 8, which would be 32. So I know it's between those two numbers. The best estimate probably being 3 times 8, which is 24. In part B, if I'm looking at this division quotient, well, I can see that... 24 and 5 sevenths is probably, we could round down to 24 divided by 4, which is going to give me 6. I could also work that out as 24 divided by 5 or um, 25 divided by 5, which would be 5. So I'm looking at something somewhere between 5 and 6. It's just looking at rounding whole numbers here. Now, this is the important thing. We've taught multiplication as repeated addition. The key we want to start working with our students is, is that exponents is really repeated multiplication. And that way, when we have that repeated multiplication, we're really going to add the exponents when we multiply two exponents with a like base. We also know that any exponent raised to the zero, any base raised to the exponent of zero equals one. So it doesn't matter what I have. If I raise it to the zero power, it's going to be 1. In a to the negative n, it's going to flip it and become 1 over a to the n. And if I'm dividing two exponential expressions, I'm going to subtract the exponents. And this is the final 1. When I raise an exponent to another exponent, I multiply. This is kind of re redefining arithmetic for students. So you want to really teach this as Copy these rules down, put them in front of you, practice with them, because we're reframing what you think you do when you multiply or divide. And then finally, we have the distributive property for exponents. So if I want to use the property of exponents to justify that these things are equal or not equal, first, I'm going to have to do the negative exponent by flipping the fraction. So instead of negative x, it's going to be 1 over negative x to the squared, I know that when I square something, it's going to become positive. So I have one over x squared, which is not negative x to the negative two. So we can say that we don't think this is gonna be an equality statement. Now in this case, I'm gonna flip it and I get negative one over x cubed, which is going to be negative. 
then I'm going to say, okay, negative 1 over x cubed, is that going to be the same thing as if I simplify negative x to the negative 3? So I'm going to work on that, and I get the exact same statement. So yes, those are equivalents. In part C, I'm going to distribute the negative 1 to each term inside of the parentheses in the right-hand side, and then on the left-hand side, I'm just going to raise b to the negative 1, which means b flips. So this first part here is going to be just converting this to the simplest form. Here, I flipped the entire inside and got 1 over a, b because the negative 1 goes to both, and 1 over a, b would be not equal to this. So I'm not getting the same thing between the two things. Here are some more examples that you can work through. I also have some videos on my YouTube channel that are really helpful with exponents. You may wanna go through those because this textbook kind of glosses over exponents and I have some really in-depth videos there. Here for working with numbers, we don't wanna just jump over to our calculator, but you can, when you have a number, utilize the calculator to solve. So these would be solved in these methods utilizing the calculator if you're dealing with numbers. I would prefer you to do them by hand, but that's okay. And if you have a variable, you have to do it by hand. 